All right, you're not gonna wanna miss this video. I've got some great landscape photography tips ahead, and I guarantee they're gonna make you a better landscape photographer. So I'm here at Mabry Mill in the Blue Ridge Mountains in Virginia. This is a magnificent place, just beautiful here. And this old mill, um, it's certainly been a, an attraction for many photographers. And I've been here, I don't know, many times. In fact, I was here last time a few years ago. And I captured a few images and I'll show some of those. But um, I, in fact, I was here yesterday capturing an image and I was kind of waiting this morning. I came back this morning to, to let the sun come up over the ridge line a little bit and kind of hopefully cast some warm light on the mill. That's what I'm looking for. But I uh, don't know if I'm gonna get that. But nevertheless, got me thinking this morning, you know, I came down and I noticed that the, the, the reflections are just not there anymore. The water level's down and there's some green on the side, some vegetation on the side that, that's kind of died out. The mill is kind of ran down a little bit from the last time I was here. And, uh, unfortunately, some of the uh, the paddles in the wheel are, are missing, and I don't know if that adds to the image or takes away from it, but uh, it's certainly something to think about. But what it really got me thinking about was many times I think I visit a location and I'll think, well, you know what? I didn't get it this time. I'll come back next time. I, I don't get to Virginia very often, and so I don't have a lot of opportunities to shoot this mill. Um, but the thing is, is that you can't always count on it being better. It's not always better. And I think I've captured an image of this with the reflections and those reflections are just, just mirror image of each other. And I really like that, especially in a, in a whole grist mill like this, the, the reflections in the water are pretty spectacular and that's gone. And so some greenery's kind of grown up there where, where the water was and it's taken away the reflections. So, I'm going much longer lens, going with a much longer lens here and really kind of compressing the scene and capture the, the greenery. And uh, we're right by the highway here, so there's some cars coming, but uh, anyway, not a lot of traffic here, but you still get traffic. But as the day picks up, this business picks up at this place. Well, it's like I was saying, you can't always depend on returning to the scene and it being better or, or even the same as it was for that matter. And you might just be at that moment in time where the scene is going to yield the best image possible maybe even ever who knows uh, things things happen in landscape i think it's one of the challenging but but exciting things about landscape photography is that everything changes that's why it never gets dull landscape photography never gets dull because everything changes we change gear changes the scene changes everything changes so capturing that moment where a particular scene was at its best is a very exciting thing. Well, I think what I'm trying to say, and I'll try to sum it up as briefly as I can, landscape photography is a, it's a hobby or, or profession of, of great difficulty, but great enjoyment. It's challenging, but very fulfilling. And the thing is, is that we have to, it's a bit like lining the stars and the moon up, that perfect moment in time to, to make that image happen. Ansel Adams once said, we don't take an image, we make it. And it's just not as easy as pulling up, get out of your cars, you just happen to be drive by. I mean, he's done that, actually, one of his best images. He's done just like that, so it can't happen, but nevertheless. It's pulling up, walking out of your car, slap a tripod down, take a picture, and you got it. No, it's more than that. You've really got to align everything and make it happen. You've got to make that image. And to do it, to align the stars and the moon, requires planning, organization. You, you've got to be in the right conditions. You have to know what's happening, where the water levels are, where the, uh, the, uh, the flowers blooming. There's so much that goes into this to capture the image that you have in the mind's eye. And for me anyway, that's what it's all about. So I have this vision, this image in the mind's eye, and I'm, I wanna pull it together. And that's what I was doing this morning. But that image, really involved 
more reflections. Now, I've been here before and I really wasn't anticipating the water levels being low, um, but nevertheless they are. So even despite planning and efforts, we can still come up short. So it is what it is. So how do I save this image? I don't have the reflections that I wanted. I do have some reflections you can kind of see, but, but they're broken up kind of by this little grassy island here from the lack of water flow. So water levels have been down for some time. And what I'm thinking is, or what I'm going to do, I should say, is I'm going to cut out the, the bottom half of the reflections and concentrate on the, the grassy foreground, kind of use that at the foot of the image. Although I won't have the reflections, I'm going to kind of zoom in and pull the forest and the mill together to kind of bring a, a woodsy isolated look is kind of what I'm going for. But a uh, little bit of improvising. We, don't, we can't always plan our way out of everything, so I'm going to have to improvise on this one nonetheless. But we'll see how it turns out. You know, I've mentioned this before, but I'll throw this out there as a tip again. One of the things I like to do and that I highly recommend, certainly if you're new to photography, is before you push that shutter release button, do what I call a 360 inspection. So basically looking, start, pick a corner, top right corner, wherever, and start looking at your image inside the viewfinder or on the LCD. You can even kind of zoom in on your LCD and just kind of go around the edge of the image and make sure that you don't have any distracting elements coming in. Something that was just, you know, that later you're going to get back into post when you're sitting at it looking at a looking on it on a 15 or maybe 17 inch monitor and you're going to see something branch or some object coming into the scene and that can be avoided by doing that 360 degree inspection whether you're using the viewfinder or the LCD on the back of the camera. You know even though I'm waiting for the light to come up above the trees I'm in the mountains Blue Ridge Mountains so sunrise was an hour ago so I talk about the golden hour and the golden hour just has the most pleasing light. And that's what I want. I want that pleasing light on top of the mill. I'm hoping for light to shine through the trees. I get that dappled, pleasing light on the mill. I don't know if I'm gonna get it or not, but that's what I'm waiting for. But trying to balance this can be tricky. So what I could get is in a situation is, is that I start getting well beyond the golden hour and then I start to get harsh, deep, shadow, contrasty image in areas of the image that I really wasn't wanting. And, and it's easy to do because I'm so distracted, waiting for that light to come in on the mill and capture that, that split second moment and make that image that I'm looking for. So it's best to keep everything in mind and realize that you've only got so much time. Time and light is everything in landscape photography. This is why camera settings are something to think about. They're really irrelevant when it comes to, to landscape photography as far as what settings did you use. But the settings at the time of capturing the image, they are important. In that, you know, I, I'm shooting in manual mode. And in manual mode, um, I'm in control of shutter, ISO, and aperture. And so I have a set aperture of f8. But I'm, I'm varying my shutter speed to compensate for the light. So as the light changes, though, my exposure is going to change. So it's easy to get kind of lost and waiting for that moment and then the light comes up and I overexpose my image. So something to think about as you're waiting for light you might have to drop your shutter speed down a little bit and uh, or excuse me increase your shutter speed a little bit to kind of compensate for the increase in light. You know another tip I would share is this is that you don't always have to do it, but depending on your perspective and whether your camera is, is uh, aiming down or up, uh, or you're using a wide angle, those things can affect the image and cause distortion. So shooting wider than you need to shoot is something to think about. But even if, even if you're, you're not worried about distortion, right now I'm kind of compressing the scene, longer lens, I'm not worried about distortion, but in distortion meaning making your trees look crooked, I'm not worried about that, but what I am worried about is leaving myself enough room to crop in a little bit if I need to. So I'm shooting a little bit wider than I need to just to make sure that I can kind of move that image around in post-processing to kind of get the best alignment. So I like the dappled light I'm getting on the mill, although I'm not getting on the, any on the roof. I'm kind of reaching that point now where I'm losing the quality of the light, the color of the light. And so 
and, and the kind of the way I judge that is I really can't tell on the mill and I don't want to get back in post processing and it just looks like a dark bright or excuse me a bright flashlight shining on the on the mill so I'm kind of looking at the hillside um, in front of me or excuse me off to the side and just kind of judging the the harshness of the of the morning light and so I'm getting to that point where the lights getting really bright and I'm losing that warm warm glow that I really want to keep in my image so I don't think I'm gonna get the the warm dappled light on top of the mill but nevertheless I think I'm gonna be pretty happy with this image well, I think that's about it I didn't get the dappled light on the rooftop like I wanted but I did get it on the side of the mill and I think I'm gonna be pretty happy with that in post-processing and uh, at the at the end of the video here I'll show you some images of previously captured shots here from the mill and along with these along with this one I think this last one that I just captured so uh, yeah but anyway we'll see so I'm gonna get out of here and end the video but uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did enjoy the video consider subscribing to the channel and if you do subscribe hit that little bell icon so you're notified of any future videos that I post and uh, drop me a comment let me know your thoughts and as always if I don't see you down the road maybe I'll see you on the trail <laughs>